can the Environmental Protection Agency continue to regulate air pollution through the Clean Air Act? Now, this Supreme Court case that happened last week is huge for anyone concerned about their continued ability to breathe. Now, generally, in the United States, there's this thing called separation of powers. Congress, they write the laws, and the executive branch, they enforce those laws. And the EPA, they're part of the executive branch. Now, in some cases, Congress gets a bit of an identity crisis going. Oh man, they expect us to pass new laws? We've seen our track record, and that's not going to happen. I'll tell you what. I'll give you, a federal agency, the right to create and enforce your own laws. There, just freed us all up a little more time to debate whether the corporate bailouts should be large or supersized. Now, such is the way with the Clean Air Act. The year? 1970. Disco was just taken off and America was still two years away from that whole Watergate not trusting the executive branch thing. Crazy times. Congress, at that time, was playing a little bit fast and loose with their authority, delegating to the Environmental Protection Agency the authority to issue significant rules, including those capable of reshaping the nation's electricity grids and unilaterally decarbonizing virtually any sector of the economy, without any limits on what the agency could require, so long as it considers cost, non-air impact, and environmental requirements. Then, for the next 50 years, nobody really cared or noticed about this. Enter the case of West Virginia versus the Environmental Protection Agency, which asked the question, did Congress have the authority to delegate their authority? Yeah, this is a doozy of a debate. Now, the first thing I really have to do here is clarify the sides, because this debate is less heads or tails and more Huh, that cloud is white. No, you idiot, the sky is blue. The conservative argument paints a picture of a truly no guardrails EPA. Your imagination is the regulatory limit, and these are hippies we're talking about. You know their imaginations. If given the opportunity, ignoring the last 50 years of course, they could rewrite the rules for any industry's emissions. Now, the progressive position, on the other hand, is to take an incredibly, incredibly limited view of the issue at hand. Whoa, 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 read the complaint that you submitted to the court. This is not about the potential power of the EPA. Were we to ever start crumbling nations or whatever you think we're going to do in the next few years, well, sue us over that. Instead, this whole lawsuit is about whether an incredibly specific Obama-era EPA-created rule was an unconstitutional overstep. That's the question we intend to defend in front of the court. We really don't want you guys to answer that larger question, because if you do, we know what you're going to say. Now, it's this choose-your-own-debate-style argumentation that laid the groundwork for an incredibly odd Supreme Court case. So let's get started with the debate that the progressives wanted to have, because it gives you a more boots on the ground understanding of what's really happening here. So to start this story, we gotta go back to 2015 and Obama's EPA announcing that the carbon pollution standards for power plants were coming down the pipe. Now were these new rules from Congress? Nope. These were all coming from the Clean Air Act authorities that were delegated from Congress to the EPA. Now, the idea of this mandate was to mandate that each individual power plant has certain reduced levels of emissions by 2030 through upgrading their tech and switching to lower emission generating fuels. Now, before the ink was even dry on that executive order, it was all aboard the lawsuit train, choo choo, destination Supreme Court. Then, well, a few months later, they made it to the Supreme Court and things did not go well for progressives. Now, the question facing the Supreme Court back in 2015 was, all right, while we go through the court process of actually figuring out whether this Obama rule is legal or not, should the EPA be allowed to enforce this rule? Now, the Supreme Court, without providing any justification, replied, 
nah, we'll keep it on ice for you guys though. It'll stay right there safe and sound until we have an affirmative yes decision that, what do you know, Obama's plans are in fact illegal. Now then Trump came in and while this Obama rule was slowly making its way through the courts, well, he got rid of it and wrote his own watered down version of this rule set. Basically, he got that document and replaced the word mandate with the word advise everywhere that it showed up. In a strange twist, this watered down Trump rule has now taken the place of Obama's rule in this court case, as the same arguments still apply. Now, a lower court would write in their decision that overturned this neither new nor improved Trump law. Although the EPA has the legal authority to adopt rules regulating these emissions, the central operative terms of both Trump's rule and the repealed Obama rule hinge on a fundamental misconstruction of the, you know, that whole congressional blank check authority delegation part of the Clean Air Act. Basically, what they said was, you can do it, you're just misreading what you're doing and overstepping. This brings us to the context for today's progressive argument. Alright, the executive branch has the authority to adopt rules regulating emissions because Congress let us, but we misconstrued that blank check authorization. I am going to win or lose this debate on these terms. Now this progressive debate is incredibly technical and hinges on how you define the word for in the phrase for any existing source. Yeah, it's one of those butch it asleep grammar teacher supreme court debates. Now the lower court's contention with this EPA regulation was that it created site specific rules for power generating stations. You can create rules for the industry at large, but not down to individual generators. Now the court pointed to George W. Bush as an example of a program where the executive branch wasn't overstepping. You see, during George W. Bush's administration, the EPA adopted a cap and trade program under the Clean Air Act's blank check section to reduce mercury emissions from power plants. Yeah, you're limiting mercury emissions of the industry generally, but you're not calling up individual power plants and generators and telling them how to run their stuff. We're not going to individual sites, we're just telling the industry what to do. So what's the EPA's response to this incredibly nuanced broadside? You're right! Sorry. Biden agreed to get rid of those rules and announced that he will not revive the clean power rules. Republicans, you won the case. We're debating an out of date rule in which both sides acknowledge it was kind of illegal what we did. So at this point, great use of our time. Now in the arguments for why this case was irrelevant, the EPA argued, we are reconsidering our approach to regulating CO2 emissions from power plants and petitioners face no present obligations because the rule had been removed. They later threw out the baby with the bathwater right continuing and saying, the court of appeals, the lower court decision earlier, correctly rejected the Trump rules reading of the atextual restriction into section 111. Basically, yeah, the lower court was right. We were surpassing the limits of power that Congress gave us. Got rid of that rule. Uh, can we go home now, please? What do you want us to do? Now enter the conservative argument. The lower case decision declaring the rule and executive branch overstep was incorrectly decided. Wait, what? You guys won. Are we taking a victory lap here or something? Now their problem is with the granular grammar focused analysis of the lower court's ruling. Glad we found out what the word for means in the context of power generators, but we really got bigger fish to fry here. Now in their mind, this would be like a legal debate saying, um, well the law right here says someone can't rule indefinitely in this country, and he says he'll be leader for life. Death. Well, that's technically a point, so it's not indefinite. Fine by the courts. Now, conservatives emphasize that the lower court did not consider whether the Constitution would allow Congress to delegate so expansively had it even wanted to. 
Now most of their argument relies on the theoretical rules like the hanging rule of Damocles. Sure this law that both sides of the debate are saying was an overstep is off the books, but this thing just became a Pandora's unboxing video and we got some bigger questions to ask here. Now unfortunately for progressives, the fact that the court even voted to hear this case is a pretty big acknowledgement that a majority of the justices see at least validity in the conservative arguments here. Now the concern amongst conservatives is that the almost complete lack of limiting factors in the current iteration of this blank check rule exists. I mean, sure there can't be regulations I guess put on individual power generators, we'll see how this case plans out, but it doesn't look great for that. And of course the EPA also has to justify any rule with respect to cost, non-air health and environmental factors, and energy needs, but beyond that, sky's the limit. From the conservative perspective, a victory would be the court system severely reigning in the EPA and executive branch's authority at large to create their own rules without congressional passage. Now with these lines drawn, we really have no idea where the pieces are going to fall. Agencies could be banned from creating any rules without congressional approval, severe limits could be placed on an agency's freedom to create their own rules, or we could end up with, I don't know, anything in the whole entire spectrum, something much lighter. I'll let you guys know how the decision ends up when they release it, but one thing I can guarantee you is, that discarded Trump Obama rule is getting the old double tap from the court system. There is no way you're going to be able to reintroduce that without Congress passing it. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also, if you like what you saw, remember to click that like button let them know what you think. And also, lastly, thank you for watching.